A pro-democracy activist was among scores detained by Hong Kong police, along with at least four people arrested, as authorities tightened security on the 34th anniversary of China's bloody crackdown on protesters in Tiananmen Square. Restrictions in Hong Kong have stifled what were once the biggest vigils and memorials, marking the 1989 student demonstrations, leaving cities outside Chinese control to keep alive the memory on the June 4th anniversary. Among those detained on Sunday were Alexandra Wong, a prominent democracy activist known as Grandma Wong. Another person detained was carrying the script of theatrical play May 35th. The play has not been performed in Hong Kong since the year 2020, before the enactment of a national security law that Beijing imposed on the city later that year. <laughs> The play tells the story of a husband and wife dealing with the loss of their son who was killed when troops opened fire on democracy protesters in and around Tiananmen Square 34 years ago. This performance was staged in Taipei, Taiwan last week, a democratic self-governing island that Beijing claims is part of China. On Sunday, Taiwanese residents held a vigil of the sort now impossible in Hong Kong. One attendee there told Reuters the crackdown in Hong Kong hurt her. She said she felt very sad for the city and did not believe it was going to return to the past era of political freedom. Others said Taiwanese needed to stand up for freedom, a value they cherished. Beijing has staged military drills around the island and harshly criticized the American government's ties to Taiwan. In a sign of ongoing tensions in the region, a Chinese warship came within 150 yards of a U.S. destroyer in the Taiwan Strait in what American officials described as an unsafe manner. It came as U.S. and Canadian navies were conducting a joint exercise in the strait, which separates the island of Taiwan from mainland China. China blamed the United States for deliberately provoking risk in the region. You can get I'm here to understand more about the history, where many people were persecuted because they were fighting for freedom. I think freedom is something that was fought for. The reason why we can speak freely now is because our ancestors had fought for it. That's why we need to remember the history. But we also have to be cautious. We should not allow democracy and freedom to be infringed again. Of course, it hurts me. I feel so unworthy for those people who were detained for political reason, not because they did something wrong. I also feel sad for Hong Kong. Hong Kong is not going to return to the past. We are students from mainland China. We don't we don't have received a lot of education, you know, from like this kind of protest things or uh, uh, pro political things. So uh, we have to self learn this kind of uh, things, and we have to. Uh, to remove, to erase our uh, afraid of uh, our government to doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Every means to suppress our freedom.
people in China while also sharing solidarity. Before two, 20, uh, 2020, there's no protests from, by, uh, made by the young people, organized by the young people like this. And now we have, not only in England, but in Paris, but in Berlin, but in, uh, in American and in overseas. The young people are feeling about that. I think it's a trend. The Tibetan identity, language and culture. We have become a stronger voice a lot of people in China have a kind of awareness that the government wants to maintain its dictatorship. They want to maintain the rule and they don't care about whether the people live or die. So I think they have a certain level of awareness in their mind. It's not like in the past where they believed whatever the Chinese government would say.